Hi everyone, it's Deacon Steve Greco. And Mary Ann. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the, the Bible, Bible and you. you. And you, and you, and you, and you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Got you on that one. Uh -huh. 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Um, I love these readings because first of all, I love Isaiah, and there's a verse in here that's one of my absolute favorite verses oh, really? in all, all of Isaiah. And in the second reading, there is some verses that I really, really love. And of course, the gospel reading is one of the best parables in all of Scripture. Oh, well, we better get started, and, because I have uh, a feeling someone's going to be talking well, I'm a excited. Lot. <laughs> in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these wonderful people. We ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to send upon them, to fill them, fill them with joy, fill them with hope, fill them, Lord God, in which they make the right decisions, that they worship you with all their heart, soul, might, and strength, that they follow you, that they desire you, that they not get trapped by the enemy, that they not be deceived by the world, Bless them with every spiritual blessing and heal them spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically through the intercession of Our Lady of Guadalupe, our Blessed Mother, through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So the first reading from the second book of Isaiah. Tell us about that. Uh, well, uh, there's a couple... Isaiah prophets. And that's why you say the second book. It's actually Isaiah 55, but it's the second Isaiah prophet who's speaking. And um, before, it's not necessarily Isaiah, right? It could right. be somebody else in the name writing. Of Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah. in the name of Isaiah. Yeah. Before before these verses, the prophet had been calling on the chosen people to come to God, come back to God, and seek Him while He still can be found, and He begs them to turn back. Um, to God who is rich and, and kind and forgiving. And so basically now he's just describing things. So let's get started. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens, the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So what do you think my favorite verse is? I verses? think here is, so my word does not go out void. <laughs> I think you emphasized it. That was pretty easy for all our listeners to, to get that one, too. That goes forth from my mouth will not return to me void. Yeah. He says, thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, because the rain and snow in, in um, Israel is not very often, but it's necessary to feed the people. And to, to uh, grow crops. And so, Not too much snow there, right? Well, once in a while there's snow in Jerusalem. Once in a yeah, while, yeah. yeah. I've seen pictures of it. Um, so, you know, this is a kind of a description of who God is and, and what the church is like. He says, and, and um, it'll rain and snow and do not return there till they have watered the earth. So, you know, like God's word, it goes out and it doesn't return back to heaven as they see it until it's done what it needs to do and make the earth and the soil fertile and fruitful so the seeds can grow. And that's what God's word does for us. Uh, and he says, uh, go forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I said it. You know, the, the word of the Lord is very powerful. We don't really... The most powerful, right? Yes. And people don't understand that. Yes. One of the things that uh, when, when the lector gets up, he has a great honor and privilege to proclaim the word of God. One of the things I... I um, encourage people is that the Word of God in, in the Bible and Scripture is really made to be read out loud. Yes. And there's power when you read it out loud. Power. So um, God's Word doesn't go void. It, 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 it always affects things. So what I say, even in Bible study, don't read it silently to yourself. Proclaim it. Mm -hmm. Read it out loud. And you'd be amazed. I mean, there's so many ways we can read 
a scripture and it brings power and healing and, and exactly. things like that. It's just so powerful. But um, I encourage everyone, rather than just read it silently, read it out loud to yourself. And you know what? I bet you you'll be be uh, pleasantly surprised at the power you feel when you hear the word because the word faith comes from hearing. Amen, which is actually in, in Romans um, 10, faith comes from hearing and blessed are the feet who proclaim the good news. Just to give you a couple quick examples. Um, 2 Thessalonians 3, 3, one of our favorites. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. You can put that in your terms. The Lord is faithful to me, to Steve. The Lord is faithful to Marianne. The Lord is faithful to my family. He will strengthen me, Steve, Marianne, my family. He will guard us from the evil one. Power in that spoken word. I want to go to Genesis. The Can very I just beginning. say one thing before you do Please that? Please do. Well, I, I just, you reminded me, it's important. Uh, we memorize certain verses in our life that are meaningful to us. And we, it's like you, we should encourage you right. to pick verses that touch your heart and memorize them. And then when things happen, you just don't repeat them in your head or proclaim them out loud. And it's very powerful. It's a real tool it, and it a, is, a it weapon is against the evil one and, and uh, as well as a healing process. So don't take it lightly. Okay. No, no, no. It's, it's just so important that we understand that and that we proclaim that um, you do not throw away your confidence it will have great recompense this is Hebrews 10 36 you need endurance to do the will of God all of that becomes so important and and just you know I, I started it with Genesis Genesis 1 it's the spoken word from God mm -hmm. let there be light then God said let there be light, and there was light. That's verse 3. Verse 6, then God said, there's a dome in the middle of the waters. Verse 9, then God said, let the water in the sky be gathered in a single basin. Verse 14, then God said, let there be lights in the dome in the sky to separate day from night. So you get the point. It's the spoken word right. that creates. So, so again, powerful. very, so, so don't the be word, shy. the Read word will not loud, return void. Even if you're by yourself. Yeah. And that's why also the spoken word to say things like, I am healed in the name of Jesus. I am blessed in the name of Jesus. I mean, you, you go and yeah, I'm getting real excited. Here. Yeah, you are. <laughs> but you, you go and you take a look at Ephesians and you take a look at like Ephesians one here. I'll find it where it says, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Change that us to your word in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens that has blessed you. Say your word right now. Say your name. The blessed Mary Ann with every spiritual blessing to bless every person who is listening with every spiritual blessing chose you before the foundation of the world to be holy. I've been chosen to be holy. That spoken word, when you say it out loud, really makes a difference. It does, and I, I want to encourage our listeners to not take this uh, lightly, but to really, of course, we're kind of preaching to the choir here because they're listening to us. They but we have, all need to hear it, though. They, they, yeah, they, they have some interest in it, but I encourage you. This is what's why we do this. This is so important. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself to hear the Word of God and to understand it, because sometimes when you... When it's read, it's just like blah, blah, blah. But if you've read it beforehand, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. then you you know, you've thought about it. You're prepared to hear the message and, and you, allow God's work to, to work on you and, and grow you. And, and when you read it with expectation, mm -hmm. with joy, knowing that this word is truth, it is truth. It is Jesus. Jesus, the word made flesh. You, your heart leaves with joy, and you feel like going. Oh, I didn't. You didn't see that coming. I did not see the little blower. You didn't see it coming. No. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, one of the things I I also want to uh, remind the readers or the listeners to do is not to be reading the word of God when it's being proclaimed. That we really should yeah. be listeners or hearers. 
We need to Im- word. what's called imbibe, right? You know that word imbibe, which means absorb. It's almost like chew on it, you know, you totally absorb it into your heart, mind, and soul. And that's why repeating it, you know, singing the psalms, sing, repeating the words so, become very important. So I would say like, you know, if you read the scripture beforehand, you're, you're familiar with it, but then you can just sit there and listen to it being proclaimed and spoken like God intended And then what do we be. do? Hallelujah. You're a little wild today. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Let's go into the response to Royal Psalm. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed seed that that falls falls on on good ground ground will yield yield a fruitful fruitful harvest. harvest. Thus have you prepared the land, drenching it furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The The seed seed that that falls falls on good good ground ground will yield a fruitful harvest. harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty, and your paths overflow with a rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing clothes the hills. The The seed seed that that falls falls on good ground ground will yield yield a fruitful fruitful harvest. harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks, and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The The seed seed that that falls falls on good ground ground will yield a fruitful harvest. harvest. Well, you know what I learned about this? It's kind of describing God's word, and God's Mm -hmm. word is being, again, uh, falling... uh, you know, on the land. But the, what they're doing here is describing what we call dry dirt farming. Mm. And that's what they did in Israel. And um, maybe they still do a bit of it today. It's not like what we see here. And that is they would wait for it to rain, which is not that often. Yeah. And, and the rain would prepare the dry soil. And then after it rained and, and it was uh, rich and full of moisture, then they would sow the sh- seeds. Whereas we think of in America, we think of, you know, we, we uh, spread the seeds and then we water it and we, you know, turn on the sprinklers or the irrigation stuff. But that's what they did. And, and what that does is it really connects. You have to have a sense that God is involved in this process. Right. You know, because you're you're relying on God for the the water and prepare the soil and then, you know, they they didn't know what the seed was doing underground. They're trusting in God. So this is kind of farming and it's good to have a complete dependence upon the Lord. And that's what they're describing here, that God does all these things and the seeds will will fall on ground and yield a fruitful harvest. Yeah, and they obviously at the time, uh, this is before Jesus and Psalms, but all during the time of the Old Testament, New Testament, you know, they were... Most of the people were farmers, right, of some way, shape, or, or form. Or shepherds. Or shepherds, but they certainly involved with the earth and animals. But what this is really re- relating to is, some, is talking about is what people can really relate to. You know, and that is, you know, seed falls, will it grow? Will it produce fruit? And so many times Jesus is telling us over and over again that when you trust in God and when you put him first, that's when the good crop is going to happen. Right. And it says here, you know, the, the responsorial line is the seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. It's the idea of a blessing or mm-hmm. a harvest is, is coming. And so one of the things that I think that we don't take the time to do in today's world, well, we're not growing, most of us aren't growing crops here, but we do have things that have, we have been blessed with. Yes. Throughout the year. And I think we really need to take time to meditate on the great things God has done for us in our life. And I'll make a list and and, uh, just start thinking. I used to have a list that I kept in my car when I drove. And if something happened or I thought of something, I'd write it down. But that's what he's talking about. Let's, Let's look at the things where God has 
uh, yielded, a, he's prepared the soil for us, he's done all these things so we can get into heaven. And we don't take the time sometimes to recognize what God's doing in our life. So I encourage our listeners this week to do that. And to praise him and to write it yes. down. Thank you, Lord, for giving me this, 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 and this. Thank you, Lord, for giving me this job at the diocese as director of evangelization and formation. I came out of nowhere. Who would have predicted that? If two years ago someone said that I would be at the diocese of Orange doing what I'm doing, or that I'm in the process of making a, a full-length 85-minute film uh, that will be shown worldwide, uh, would somebody have said, would I have said that that was possible? No, we just don't know. But with God, all things are possible. And we just have to expand her, our horizons. The prayer of Jabez, some of you may remember that, to expand your territory by allowing God to take over our life. Amen. 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 So second reading. Uh, yep, yeah, the second reading. Uh, my, one of my favorite chapters, oh, Romans 8. You've been pushing 18 that for to a 23. Month now. <laughs> a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider the sufferings of, the pres of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to uh, futility not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation in groaning and labor pains, even until now, and not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, what's your favorite line in this one? Well, you said you had a favorite line in this. I, I, the whole concept of creation groaning and labor pains, mm -hmm. you know, is something that I actually relates to. This is Romans eight, but it relates to the second chapter. For me, in Romans, if if I can get it here well, quickly. Well, Adam and Eve sinned, and so the. The perfect world was kind of torn apart. Right. We wait for groaning, the first fruits being Jesus Christ for Ex us. Exactly. Salvation. And uh, and then we are to be in charge of, of uh, nature. Yes. And so it's waiting for us to get ourselves together. Yes. <laughs> I might yes. say. That's very, very true. And, and so all of nation, you know, just like when... Jesus was walking down Palm Sunday and they said, stop, you know, your, your, mm -hmm. your disciples from praising. And, and Jesus said, even the stones themselves would praise, you know. In other words, all of creation is connected together, created by God to praise him in different ways. I mean, I always think of the birds. Oh, I was going to say that yeah. too. Yeah, when I hear them chirping, I go, oh, they're praising God. Yes. Or, the, or the beautiful flower, the rose that's blooming. It's praising God by its doing, by what it was uh, intended to do, to bloom and, and be beautiful. And so we praise God. So that way. this world is going to melt away into a glorious world, a glorious heaven. And that's why this world is going to be set free from slavery into the glorious freedom of the children of God. And that's what we're groaning for. We're waiting for the time we're with God in heaven forever. Uh, just so important that we understand that. There's unbelievable hope in the future. And again, we see this in Corinthians, you know, where in Corinthians it, it talks about again, you know, at the, at the very beginning, one of our favorite is Corinthians 2, 9. What eye has not seen, ear has not heard, was not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. Everything is expecting, expecting, expecting these wonderful things to happen, and, and they will happen. You know, it says here as labor, like labor pains, in the sense that as a right. woman who's given birth, I think you can relate to. It's like we, you have to do a little work to get that baby out. <laughs> and and it's not always fun. And, and sometimes while we're waiting uh, on our trip to heaven, we're doing things. And yeah. sometimes we get in difficult kind, times and we just feel like, oh, 
you know, this isn't going to end, but we need to look at the final picture, where we're going. We have and that pain. any suffering we have is worth it all for, for we're going to be in heaven with the Lord forever. Forever and ever and ever. Yeah. So... You so know, it's something that really holds and, me and, together when I'm having a difficult time. And I think as we look at the gospel reading, too, it kind of all fits together mm -hmm. that there's going to be challenges. We all know that. We live here. <laughs> we live on earth. These challenges. And, and uh, so we go to the gospel or anything else on the, the second. Oh, I think reading. that's good. That's, there's a lot in the gospel. Let's do it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. The whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of, of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their ears and hear with their ears. See with their eyes and hear with their ears. And understand with their hearts and be converted, and I heal them. And blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen. I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sold on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word. But then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bear fruits and yield, yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there's a lot to say in here. One of the things I want to make clear is uh, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea, and there were so many people. Now, we see in Scripture that when um, there's a lot of people and it's outside, Jesus teaches in parables. And that's because if you've ever taught school or done anything outside, you don't have the attention so much of people. They're looking around, look, and he used things that they were looking at at the time. There are um, people who have even written a calendar uh, using scripture and what Jesus is teaching about in the time of year it happened. So he, he got in a boat and he sat down. And um, they really feel like the acoustics, if he's a little distance and the, the way the uh, Sea of Galilee is, that you know, that kind of goes up, the acoustics. Is, so he's teaching from the boat. And um, so I, I really want to make, there's two things happening here. There's the first part of the story, which is really a parable. And um, Jesus taught in only parables. The second part is actually an allegory, which is a Greek type of teaching. And when they, if scholars feel that that was added later. And here's the difference. A parable all comes down to what the last line says. It's something to think about, but then they gives you the last line. 
is what it is. An allegory will explain the meanings of things. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, you don't realize it's kind of two put together here. Um, but he talks to them, and I think he uses parables. For me, it's because a lot of times you think about it, and it stays with you using things. And you have to hear. But the last line in the first par parable is, whoever has ears ought to hear. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's saying. You know, there, there are seeds here. The key to understanding is always the last line, okay? Then it goes on when it explains who, what each seed does mm. and, and, and uh, what happens when it falls on the rocky ground. Let's see, I'm, I'm the seed on the, so the seed sown on the path is one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals it away. Mm. Um, you know, and that, that happens to people today. They hear the word of God, but it doesn't sink in. And they just kind of go on their way and, and Satan steals it away. They, they don't, you know, really, it doesn't stick with them. And then the seed of the, on the rocky ground is one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But then it only lasts for a time. Mm. You know, do you know anybody like that? A lot of people, right, yeah. that have heard God's word, put things into action, get really involved in, in various committees and various ministries, and then, then the next you hear, they're gone. You don't see yeah. them anymore. They dropped out of church. They left the church. They maybe not going to any church. Yeah, it's, hard. it's, it's very common. They don't have common. real roots in it. It's very common. And then they have the seeds among the thorns. Is one who hears the word, but the worldly anxieties and the lures of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. When we see that. Well, people are tempted all the time. And yeah. they pray, nothing happens according to them. And then they say, okay, well, now I'm going to go to the dark side. They go to a fortune teller. or They, they just drop out. Or they you don't know. even do that. I mean, it's like... If, if they they uh, pray or they do something, but it doesn't last because life is hard, and so they get caught up in the world. Yeah, they get than caught up to God. in sex, money, power, materialism. You know, I gotta get that extra this, that, or whatever. Yeah. And so yeah. And and, and so then, then of course, but the seed sown on the rich soil is the one who hears the word, understands it, and then bears good fruit for it. You know, uh, multiple times. Uh, so this is, if you look at the, each one of those, there's people even within our church that are different stages of how they've heard God's word. Everywhere, within yeah. our families, within our communities. Yeah, everywhere, so. you're right. And, and, you know, difficulties come their way and they kind of give up God and, you know, mm -hmm. he didn't answer my prayer right away. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just going to go on. So, I, you know, I think it's just really interesting. Um, Christ's me messages for... The same for us as it was for them. Yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, the world chokes off, you know, our, our ministry, our faith. You know, it, it can. We have to be very, very diligent, very persistent. We have to recognize what's happening around us because the devil is attacking us. If, if we're building up the body of Christ, you'd be sure of one thing. The devil will tempt us with the world, with riches, with you know this, that, or whatever, whatever it might be, discouragement. But we have to stand our ground and be firm. Well, you know, I and think then that's yeah. when we, we uh, produce bountiful fruit. You know, we have to be tested. There's no doubt about it. If you're being tested, then rejoice the Lord in the Lord. Because you, you persevere in that test, and God's going to use you in a powerful way. Well, you know, one of the things that for me I hear in this uh, loud and clear is that we have to be prepare the soil. We can't just expect God's word to fall on us without taking time to listen to it, to, to prepare our soil to be rich so we can grow the roots and we can withstand the long haul of this. And so we need to look at that and say, what kind of soil am I? To receive so, God's word. Daily Mass, the Eucharist, daily adoration whenever possible, praying the rosary, putting in your holy hour, doing all the things to build up spiritual muscle is required 
to offset the attacks of the world. So may Almighty God bless you with every spiritual blessing. And may you say yes to the Lord to bear fruit and good seed. We bless you with every spiritual blessing. And I bless you with every spiritual blessing. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is Deacon Steve Greco. And Mary Ann. And you've, you've been, been on, on the Bible, Bible and you. you.